Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today, let me show you how to use the new Drop Caps feature in Pages. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 600 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So this is a new feature in Pages version 10.0 so make sure you've updated your version of Pages. So to create the drop cap in a paragraph you need to put your cursor in the paragraph. So it could be blinking at the beginning, it could be at the end, you could select it. It doesn't really matter as long as the cursor is in the paragraph because it's something that affects the entire paragraph even though it's just the first letter that's going to change. So now that you've got that you want to go to Format in the sidebar and then Style. and Then go all the way to the bottom and you'll see Drop Cap as the very last thing. There's a checkbox and also a little menu where you can choose some styles. You could turn the drop cap on by simply checking the box or choosing a style. That will also check the box. I'll check it and it will choose the default drop cap. So you can see here I have a large first letter that goes through three lines and pushes all three lines over to the right. Now I could switch to one of these other styles by clicking here and choosing one of these. So here is the capital letter sticking out above the first line. In this one we get a letter that covers four lines and the lines mold to the shape of the letter. Here we have one that goes out towards the left and the rest of the text is flush with the left margin. Here's one that's kind of in the center. The letter is right in the middle of the left margin. And here's one where the letter is actually white with a black background with little curved corners. Now these are just suggested styles. You don't have to use any one of these. So let's go back to the first default one and then instead we're going to scroll down and we can now see that that checkbox is checked. We have three different controls here. The first is the number of lines. So I could reduce that to say only two lines or I can increase it to four lines or however many I want. Also the number of characters. So here I have the first letter but I can increase that to include the second letter or maybe the first five letters. Now that's just the most basic settings. Under Options you have a lot more. Click that and you have this separate menu here with all sorts of controls. So first the number of raised lines which is 0. If I increase that to 1 you can see it raises the drop cap one line above the text. And I could do that to one less than the number of lines high that the drop cap is. So in this case it's three lines. I can have it go up two above. Then I have text wrapping. So I can have it wrap closer to the letter like that or have it in a straight line. I have extra spacing so I can add a little bit of extra spacing here to the right side if I think I need it. And also the out dent. Now the out dent is how far to the left the letter is moved over. If I go Far over, you can say I go 200% here. 100% will actually put it kind of with the right side of the letter flush with the left margin. And zero puts the left side of the letter flush with the left margin. In addition, I can check a background shape. And now I have a whole bunch of extra controls. So now I can set a color for a background shape. So I can select any color. I can use the color wheel if I want. Even set it to semi transparent or completely transparent. I can choose a border. So I can do a line border to go around it. Set the size of the border set the color of the border and then change the border type and all the standard borders are here. I can also choose the character scale. So here it's 80% of the size of the background. I go to 100% the size of the background or down to something very small. The corner radius I can go all the way to the left there to make it a square or I could go all the way to the right 100% to make it a circle. And when you do that Notice the size of the letter changes so the character scale and the corner radius are related. Now to change the color of the character itself you don't do that in here. You do that in the normal styling. So I could select that letter there and I could change it so I can make it say a light gray and then I can go here to the drop cap options and make the background black and have it kind of be an inverse letter there. I like the idea of making something circular, maybe a thicker border there, and maybe having the color of the border match the color of the letter. So something like that. Now typically when you do a drop cap you're going to want to have a special font. So here you just change the font of that letter just like you would any other piece of text. So here I'm going to go and choose a different font. Let's go and choose this one right here and then I get a nice fancy letter there. And once you get something you like 
you can save it. Remember these styles here? Well these work like regular styles in Pages. So I can flip through using these arrows here and I can see that I've got the second page here that's blank and a little plus button. I can click plus and you can see it saves that style. Now I could go to another paragraph. So maybe further down go to this paragraph here and I could apply that style by going to the drop cap section, clicking on that button there, going to the second page of styles and you can see there's the one I've saved. Click that and it instantly applies that to this paragraph. So I've got the same thing in both places. And these styles are updatable. So if I go in here and I say, well, you know, it would look better without the black background. So let me go in and change options, uh, change the background color to white. So now in here, if I go and I can see the styles, I can control click on this and redefine the style from selection. Now when I go back up to the first paragraph you can see since I was using that same style by redefining the style it applied it to previous places where that style was used. So I can have a whole bunch of drop caps throughout my entire book and then update them all easily like that. Now you can use this in both Keynote and Pages. So here I am in Keynote and I just have a piece of text on the slide and you can see I have the paragraph selected and under Format Text I have the same drop cap options here. So it works normally in Keynote. In Numbers it works a little bit differently. So here in Numbers I've created a text box and there's no way for me to do it on text in a text box. The drop caps option just doesn't appear. And the documentation even says it works inside of shapes. So here I've created a rectangular shape, pasted text into that, and it works fine in there. You can see you have drop caps under Format, Text, Drop Cap. So if you want to use it in numbers for some reason you need to do it in a shape. But it works in Keynote just fine in a normal text box. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.